Aloha everyone, mahalo for joining us today. I wanna to welcome you once again to our Meet the Makers virtual event series in partnership with Hawaiian Airlines, Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard. We hope you all enjoyed the trivia questions we showed during the pre-show, and we apologize for being a little bit late here today. I'm your host, Melly James, co-founder of Mana Up, a local accelerator program to help Hawaii businesses grow and scale to global markets. We're all here on Oahu. We also have a shop, House of Mana Up, where you can find the products based and made by these entrepreneurs who participated in our program. If you are a Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard holder, we have exclusive perk for you when you shop with us at House of Mana Up. Earn two miles for every $1 you spend on houseofmanaup.com. I'm stoked for today's event in the rural town of Pauilo on the Big Island. So we're here in Pauilo, Mauka. And it's a little bit of light rain here, but it's just a little mist. It just feels nice and light on your skin. And you might be able to hear uh, chickens in the background. We've got roosters in the background. We're here on a real farm. It's going to be amazing. But today is not about the chickens. Today is about saving the bees and tasting the seasonal flavors they produce here. So let's meet today's maker. Hi, Kavika. Aloha. Good to see you. Good to see you, Melly. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having us here on your farm. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. So we are here on the beautiful farm of Kavikas by Melly. And um, he's the founder of Vimelli and beekeeping expert. Aloha. Aloha. So we first met Kavika when he came through our Mana Up program, which was cohort Cohort four. Cohort four, okay. And you know, you know, he was, you know, through went through the program, went through the accelerator, which he participated in to grow his honey business and scale to global markets. Kavika, it's so good to see how much you've grown your company over the last couple of years. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really fun. It's been really fun. <laughs> so during today's event, you'll have the chance to enter to win a Vimelli Honey Trio featuring the honey in the tasting set for this event, except in full-size jars. So those are the That's big boys, right? right? That's right. All right. They're like the big boys. The 16 ounce versus the five ounce. All right. So they're kind of like this. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Um, so to enter to win, click the link we post in the comment section below and we will announce the winner at the end of the show, so be sure to stay tuned. So, Kavika, before we dive into today's event, can you tell us what our viewers should be expecting today? Absolutely. So, today we're going to be showing a little bit of the farm, a little bit of some honeybees, beehives, how they act, how humans could act around them and uh, how we harvest the honey, how we process it, and how we get it in the bottle straight for the consumer. All right, sounds good. Um, and it's, you know, it's a little crazy that we're standing right here on your bee farm amongst hundreds of bees that produce honey. So Tens I was a little bit thousands. worried if I should be wearing long sleeve, but I know you never wear anything, and so I feel very comfortable. Oh, thanks. Well, <laughs> I try to wear a veil, just, you know, make sure they don't sting my you gotta face. You got to protect the money protect maker the here, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. that's okay. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> but uh, most people may not even realize that honey that that honeys can taste different. So before we jump into our tasting, most um, most can you share a bit about the honey varietals that we'll be tasting here? Certainly, certainly. So really, the the key thing to remember is that a lot of the honey industry in today's time, um, there's a lot of processing that is involved with that, and in doing so, you lose these nuances, these colors, these taste profiles, these consistencies. And so the way that we process our honey and the way that we harvest it, depending on the floral source, so depending on the tree or the bush or the flowers that honeybees go to to collect the nectar to then turn into honey, it will actually change the honey. And so we like to call them varietals, very much like varietals of wine mm -hmm. from Pinot Grigio, Pinot Noir. Our honeys are very much like that. We have a Lehua honey or a Christmas berry honey, um, Christmas berry blossom, actually. So, so, so yeah. the color is totally different, like you can see here. And then That's the consistency, correct. whether it's like more viscous or more... Liquid, exactly. Okay. Yep. And then the taste, the aroma, the profile itself of the honey mm -hmm. berries as well. Wow. All right. Well, I can't wait to try them. Yeah, should we? Um, well, so now that we have a little bit more insight um, into the meaning behind honey varietals, and I love that you compare it to wine varietals. That really, really, I really understand that. Um, let's dive into our first honey tasting. So can you share the first honey that we'll be experiencing with our viewers? Sure. Yeah. All right. So 
This right here is our lehua blossom honey. The lehua blossom is actually uh, a flower that grows on the ohia tree. It's an endemic tree to Hawaii. So you can only find the tree here. You can only find this honey here. And um, it's a very unique varietal that blooms in the spring and summer in Pa'awilo Mauka. Um, we harvest it in the summer. Um, and it turns to this really milky white color quite fast actually. We're talking about two, three weeks. It crystallizes smoothly. And um, it's got a beautiful profile of, of like a, a burnt buttered popcorn, a little bit of some floral tones. It's, it's really sweet also. Um, but it is very unique, really. Wow. So that's more of a rare color, it, or is it, it harder? It is. It's, it's more challenging to get a, a pure white honey. Um, there are a few other varietals, like the Kiave Blossom, or I believe the Clover um, in the States. Mm -hmm. But for Hawaii specifically, yeah, it is quite challenging to get it as white as this is. Yeah. Wow. All right. Shall we taste yeah, it? Yeah, let's do it. Here you are. Thank you. All right. Oh yeah, it's kind of a, I mean, it's not hard, but it's like, it's not going to come off exactly. of the spoon. Exactly. Yeah. Guess. It's, it's, it's almost like a soft butter, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not, it's. Can I taste it? Totally. Okay, next. 100% raw lehua honey. You can really kind of taste the texture. Mm, velvety. Yeah. That's really good. Then you have those sweet undertones. You can taste the flower a little bit. It's very floral. It is floral. I was almost thinking lavender, but it's just like this floralness. Mm -hmm. It's nice and light. Wow, it's incredible. And then a little bit of buttered popcorn. That's like my favorite part about it. It's at that, 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 um, see that buttered popcorn finish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yum. Okay, so um, now that we're on to our first honey, um, shall we put it on some strawberries maybe? Sure. Yeah, yeah let's do that. So what I was thinking is, is we can grab some of these. I love the lehua honey with strawberries. It's one of my favorite uh, combination. And then um, we can do, let's put some honey on it. Okay. So, I mean, now that we're kind of tasting our first honey, and for our viewers who haven't tasted different honey varietals, I'm sure you can already tell that it tastes very different. So, a little extra for oh, you because nice. I know you like it. <laughs> I do love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We were we were testing that earlier. And then the cacao nibs adds a nice bitter bitter tone to it. We have some good friends at Manoa Chocolate. Oh, cool. Okay. And it really doesn't taste much like you know commercial brands that we taste at the um, at the store. It's so it's so different. Just from that yeah, freshness it's, it's, and, it's not and that heated. uniqueness. It's not So what happens either. when it gets heated? Um, well, you change the molecular structure of honey, but you also lose those those minute differences of each that each honey has because they're very sensitive to temperature. Mm -hmm. um, enzymes start to break down, and you just lose all those nuances. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope that everyone online viewing is learning as much about bees as I am. So Kavika. We're gonna head to look at the bee boxes. Um, can you tell? Can you um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Is that is that where we're gonna go next? Sure. All right. I'd be happy to. Let's do it. All right. The bee yard itself. I like to think of beekeeping as a way of life, a lifestyle, uh, or an art form. You know, you're working collectively um, with a different species. You're learning how they act. They're learning how you act. And there's a symbiotic relationship that happens to where you can both benefit um, from each other. And one of the favorite tools that I like to use while I'm inspecting bee yards is the smoker. Uh, the smoker is actually have, has been around for quite a long time. It allows the beekeeper to, to use smoke as a means of preventing communication within a colony. Because you see, beehives communicate via pheromone and bee dances, but when they use pheromones, there's a particular one called the alarm pheromone that can agitate, aggravate, or allow beehives to become aggressive. And it's really just to, to protect their colony, and to protect their honey. 
And so by using a smoker, you're, you're masking the alarm pheromone and it allows the beekeeper to open the hive, to inspect the colony, to check for pests or diseases, or to simply harvest honey. So it's, you're not really smoking the bees out. You're just giving a little bit of smoke to, to hide that alarm pheromone and to preoccupy the bees with gorging themselves up with honey. So once the bee yard has been smoked, um, you can enter into one of the beehives. And taking off the hive cover exposes the honey boxes. Um, we like to call them supers. In the boxes itself, you have frames. And within the frame itself, you have the comb. And so the frame just allows you to pull these uh, combs out without really damaging the beeswax or the cells or the honeybees. You know, bees love natural spaces that are hollow and the comb itself is always built with a very precise amount of bee space between each comb and having them in a frame allows us to keep the combs nice and straight so that we can remove these frames from these boxes and not hurt the bees or the brood. And so here you see a brood frame, brood being the eggs, the larva, the pupa, the propagative part of the colony. And it's always really important to inspect this part of the beehive for this is where all the action is really happening. Um, this is where your diseases might be. Um, this is where the queen cells are. And you know, depending on what type of beekeeping you're doing, you're gonna wanna do certain steps to maintain colony strength, colony health. And so I always, always check the brood boxes every 10 to maybe 14 days. There are certain cycles that happen within the colony on very precise time frame. And so as long as you abide by those time frames, you can pretty much understand what, what is happening within a colony. So it's always fun for us, you know, to get into the yard and, and to just immerse yourself into this environment, especially on a beautiful day. If you're feeling hungry or need a little bit of some boost, then, you know, you can just dip your finger right into some honey. And there's nothing like fresh honey right out of the colony. All right, so Kavika, I have to ask, you weren't wearing any gloves. I mean, you're basically just bare, just manhandling these, not manhandling, delicately handling That's the beehives. Do you ever get scared of getting stung or what's going on? I, I don't anymore. I, I used to be a little nervous and now the venom is just running through my body. So I get stung all the time and gets, gives me a little adrenaline rush, and, but it's, it's fine. Wow, okay, so you, like if you get stung, it's just like, oh. It's, did I get stung? I don't really know if I did. Mosquito bites are itchier for me. Wow. Now. Okay. Yeah. I hope to get so. that so at that point sometime. Yeah, maybe spend a, more a time with me. Threshold for pain. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Um, so you know what? It's a really cool to see like the beginning stages of honey harvest. There's so much more that goes into the process than I thought. I mean, we were up there and just all of the process with the smoke and all that. So it's super cool. Um, I'm excited to get started on our second honey tasting. So can you tell us what honey we'll be cracking into next? I'd love to. The next honey that we'll be tasting is our Christmas berry blossom. It is a Brazilian pepper tree. Mm -hmm. It's more of our... harvest it so in the hives it actually looks quite green um, but here you go have Thank a taste you. there's a little bit of a spice to it it gets you on the back of the throat when you're done enjoying it yeah you're right it has like a totally different kind of finish totally different finish yeah. different feel and walnuts it goes really nice with it all right 
Well, should we do it? I think so. All right. Please, go so for it. So can you share with me a little bit more on how you got started? How did this whole company get started? Gosh, a long time ago. <laughs> as a hobby, actually, this was um, beekeeping started for me at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in the agriculture program. And uh, one of the electives was beekeeping. And, and so I loved the class. I loved the teacher. And it just kind of inspired me to to get into bees. So it really started as a hobby, mm -hmm. with just one, two hives in the backyard, two turned to four, four turned to eight, and so on and so forth. And so I was spending all this money on a hobby. I had to turn it into a business. And here we are today. I mean, there's more detail, but. It's a nice short version. It's a short version. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like the best peanut butter and, well, nut butter, and honey mm. cracker like it's like i prefer it with the cheddar myself what but, uh, did i do the wrong combo I, it's still a great combo i i think it's great yeah no it is all right so kavika we've tasted a couple of honeys and got to see what goes into beekeeping and harvesting but i'm really curious to know how honey makes its way from the bee boxes to the jar but i think we're about to see that in just a bit right correct all right yep well, I'm excited. Here we go. <laughs> so we actually wait for the honeybees uh, to give us the cues that the honey frames are ready for harvest. And the main cue is that the cells have to be completely capped. So here you see a 100% fully capped frame and the uncapping machine is cutting the cappings off and exposing the honey that the bees put into these cells that comprise the honeycomb. And if you've never been in a kitchen that processes honey before, I can tell you it's a real sticky mess. And there's just no way in getting around that. Uh, but we feel blessed because we have these just amazing top of the line stainless steel machines that has really ramped up our production and has allowed us to produce more, to be more efficient, and you know, just to have a better environment um, to process all this honey. And so, as you can feed the frames into the machine that uncaps the comb, the combs themselves then fall on a long shelf. And this shelf allows you to double check each frame, make sure all the you know, cappings have been uncapped. And from there, you can push the frames into what we call the honey extractor. This is where the honey actually comes out of the combs. The honey extractor has a basket that spins really, really, really fast. And there are two sides to the baskets, uh, both of which can hold about 20 frames. And so we can spin 40 frames so fast that the centrifugal force created by the machine allows the honey to just get pushed out of these cells. And it really is a, a beautiful sight to see. But my favorite part is how we're left with combs that are not empty. The honeycomb being comprised of beeswax actually is very costly for the honeybee to produce and to create and to make. And so not only do we preserve our wax that gets processed like you see here, we're able to melt that down and turn it into blocks of beeswax, um, but we can also reuse the comb. The comb is left intact and we can just put it right back on the beehive and then the bees can just fill it right back up with honey again. It really is one of the greatest inventions in the beekeeping world that has completely changed the industry about 200 years ago. And so from there, the honey gets pumped and siphoned into our honey tank where we just use a very coarse strainer to catch any of the larger beeswax particles and those beeswax particles float to the surface if there's any left in the medium and then we bottle from the bottom and what's left is completely raw unheated unfiltered unprocessed honey and raw honey is in a beautiful liquid state when it starts um, so that we can bottle it quickly and efficiently put our beautiful label on it and bring it straight to you 
All right, well, it's super cool to see how honey finally makes it into the jar. You'd never think that all this work would go beyond actually producing honey. So I want to just give a quick shout out to Western Aloha that we're both wearing another Mana Up Company who's but 20 minutes down the road in Waimea. Something like that. Yeah, so this is the Palaka shirt and one of his newer designs with the, I'm not sure what this is called, but it's just a lovely dress. It's perfect. I know, you. I know. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it matches your hat too. Yeah, Fish Flags. Fish flag. Awesome brand also. And earlier we had Manoa Chocolate, their cacao nibs in our first tasting, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. a Mana Up Company cohort one. All right, and just a reminder for everyone, we are still accepting entries for our giveaway for a full-size by Melly Honey Trio. Be sure to enter before it's too late. Just click the link in the comment section and we'll announce the lucky winner at the end of today's event. I also want to remind everyone to please start entering questions. We will try to get through as many as we can. We've got Kavika all ours for a little bit, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sad that we've come to our last tasting during today's event, but I'm super excited because this one is your newest honey varietal that you've been debuting, right? That's correct. It's been out for maybe a couple months, I believe. Um, our Summer Blossom Blend. And the, the trick is harvesting honey in Hawaii. It's actually really challenging to get a single varietal, to get an actual only one bloom into a honey jar. And so we have a lot of these shoulder blooms that happen in between our single varietal blooms. And uh, most of the time we, we use it for other means other than by Melly, um, by the bucket or just larger orders. Um, but every once in a while we have one that really comes together nicely. And that's done by the bees only. We don't mix it, it's just them and we harvest it at a certain time. And so the summer blossom, happened during the summer. Also a kapa'au varietal, um, but it's it's really, really nice. It's really smooth, it's delicate, it's got a nice texture, and um, it's extremely sweet. So we love to put it on our PB and H. Uh -huh. um, but today we have our, our nutso butter, which is a combination of many different kinds of nuts all blending together, and it's gonna go really well with this. But let's just give it a taste first. So if it's a blended, it, is it because the bees can't go to just one tree because there aren't enough blossoms? It's, it's okay. yes, yes and. There's just so many flowers in Hawaii. It's always blooming. Yes, we have a winter. Yes, we have a summer. But we always have a multitude of different floral um, sources for the honeybees. And so we'll have, you know, maybe 20, 30 beehives in one particular area mm -hmm. and some hives are going to a particular flower other hives are going to another flower and then we're harvesting all the honey from a particular location okay. and then that's how that happens but you also have these subfamilies within a colony where these sisters are going to one flower and the sisters from the same hive are going to another so it happens in the hive as well oh wow okay yeah this is really sweet i mean Isn't this will it? stand up to anything yeah yeah well, I'm just loving all of this lush, these trees, all the flowers. We've got like, what, 60 foot high banana trees. I feel like I'm an avatar. It's exotic. It's Hawaii. It's <laughs> the beauty of it all, you know? It's, we feel blessed, don't we? And we're being blessed right now, just we lightly. Are. Just Light lightly. Mist. It's lovely. All right. So are we making this thing? Yep. So right. I'd grab some sourdough bread. Okay. Um, this bread actually comes from Waimea Town. It's produced by a um, sourdough uh, producer. Um, it's quite delicious. It was baked early, early this morning. Oh, okay. And um, here, I'll give you some of the honey. Okay, now this is going to be the true PB and, PB and H. Not so and H. Not so and H. Or PB, whatever you like. Okay. That's really good. Isn't that nice? It is that sweetness, that extra sweetness. Yeah, you know, it replaces the jam. There's a lot of sugar in jam. And um, I grew up with jam, but once honey came into my life, the jam kind of went somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I could see that. All right. Ooh, Whoa! Nice call. And no stain. Thank you. <laughs> well, this has been an epic Hawaiian honey tasting, Kavika. And I hope you all had a blast learning more about Kavika's world of bees and the art of beekeeping. 
It's amazing how these creatures can produce something so delicious and in such different varietals with their own unique consistencies. I mean, just these colors and the taste, it's so amazing. These you know, terroir based or varietal based single source. It's, I mean, it's, I don't think anyone really understood that before you know, really seeing these. So it's, it, I'm really impressed in. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Trying to educate and, and, and provide a delicious product to the community. And well, thank um, you for doing that. In doing so, we help the bees too. I'm excited. on these varietals, we run out of them. Mm -hmm. And when we run out, we don't have it until the next bloom, which is the following year. And so we ran out of eucalyptus quite a few months ago. And so right now, I'd say my favorite is eucalyptus because we don't have it and I'm looking forward to it mm. when it comes, so. So how long does honey last? Honey lasts forever if you harvest it and you store it the right way. A uh, fun fact that I always like to mention is that scientists have actually found honey in Egyptian tombs that dated back thousands of years. And they tested it and it, it was actually still good. Wow. So it just depends on how you store it. Obviously, Egyptians knew how to store it quite mm -hmm. well. Um, okay. But I would recommend to consume it right away. All right. Sounds good. All right. We've got tons of questions. Are you using any herbs like turmeric oregano to use medicinally? I, I do actually. I, I love to use a turmeric powder in a honey when I feel a little bit under the weather. Um, I don't jar it and sell it that way. It's just something I do on my own. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's a great way to do it. I know a lot of people think about allergies and if it, is, it, is it true that you should eat honey from your own area so that you're being introduced to pollen in, in your region? It has been said that that can help. And a lot of it has to do with the minute amount of pollen that goes into honey. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a certain floral source that's blooming, there's pollen in the air and it could maybe irritate your sinuses. And so should you consume honey from your area where these pollens are actually being produced and are getting into the honey, people say it does help them with their allergies. All right, that makes sense. All right, another question. I heard you are using your amazing honey to make a delicious new drink. Can you tell us more mm. about this and where we can get it on Oahu? Ooh, that's a good question. It's actually something we haven't really been talking too much about. It's been more in our local community, uh, but we're currently producing Jun or Jean or June. There's many ways to say it. J-U-N is how you spell it. And it's a probiotic green tea beverage. Um, we use honey as a base with green tea and we ferment it. So it's very similar to kombucha, but instead of using sugar, we use honey. Mm. And so for Oahu, we're currently selling it at the KCC Farmer's Market. We have a Vimeli booth there. Um, we may have some other locations, but right now that's the only place to get it for Oahu. All right, well, you gotta check it out, KCC. KCC. All right, next question. I'm terrified of bees, but I know they are good for us. What do you recommend when there is a bee pestering me? Well, the best thing to do is to A, stay calm, B, don't make any abrupt movements, and C, don't make any loud noises. Bees are actually very curious, fuzzy, cute little creatures, and they're gonna wanna land on you, especially if you put some perfume on or some essential oils, you're smelling like a beautiful flower, they're just attracted to you. But they'll land, they'll maybe lick you, and then they'll fly away. But that's really all you want to do, they're just very, very little movement, especially this one. This is actually what flowers do in the wind, mm -hmm. they bob, and so if you have a honeybee face and you're doing this, they're actually gonna be more attracted oh, to your more face. more curious, yeah. okay. All right, that's a really good hint, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so next question. I want to start a bee farm. I have no experience with bees, but love the idea. What are some recommendations you can share for a new bee like myself? Oh, I love to hear that. That's a great way to start, is being curious, reading books, um, signing up to your local beekeepers association. There's always a group of beekeepers around that love to meet up and talk honey and, and eat some good food with their honey. So that's a good place to start. Okay. Um, there's a book called 
the beekeeping bible which actually has a lot of history about honeybees and a lot of information about them as well as how to get started so that's a good good book reference there and if you actually want to dive deeper i would just go work at a bee farm oh oh yeah there's probably bee farms in most locations most locations yeah okay. yep. great all right, next question. How much time and commitment is required to keep bees? That's a great next question, actually. Well, it depends. How many beehives do you have? Um, and how many people do you have helping you? For us, it's, it's almost an everyday thing. It's a lifestyle, you know? You, as a farmer, you're, you're constantly adapting to the days that come. You always have a plan. The plan sometimes doesn't always happen the way you want it, but it's just a matter of adapting. And, and um, we like to take vacations, but most of the time it's just a quick trip to the beach and then back to the bee yard. Yeah. All right. I guess you can't, you can't um, train the bees to stop and pause and stuff like that. It's they just keep like going. <laughs> but we do have a time frame we can play with. So mm -hmm. two, three weeks, maybe a month. Okay, so next question. How many types of bees do you have? Types of bees? Well, in Hawaii, we have the European honeybee. And that's a species of itself. And within that species, you have a multitude of subspecies, which actually can intermingle. So in Hawaii, it started with the German black bee, which arrived in the 1800s. Then we have the Italian honeybee, and then we have the Carnolian honeybee. But they've all kind of interbred with each other. And there's been some DNA testing that has been done with an old colleague of mine. And they found that the DNA is actually completely different now than any other DNA out there in the honeybee. So we have our very own Hawaiian European honeybee. Wow. All right. And of course, it's the best. Some may say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. We have a lot of questions. Do you offer tours of your farm? At this time, we do not. Um, we are working in the process of, of having something like that happen. Agritourism is starting to become a really big thing here. And we have some friends right down the road, the Vanilla Company. They do an awesome job with having tours. And I believe one day we will. But right now we're just really trying to solidify our, our brand and our production. Keep up with production because everybody exactly. wants your honey. All right. Yeah, the Hawaiian Vanilla Company was a Mana Up Cohort 1 company. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. They're, right your They're just your neighbors. Okay, so next question. How fast can you spot the queen? Ooh, that depends. Sometimes she pops up on the first frame. Sometimes I don't see her at all. Um, we do mark our queens sometimes so that we know, you know, if we still have the same queen from year after year. Um, but with a good queen eye, as we call it, uh, you can spot her quite quickly. She's, she's about twice the size of any other honeybee in the hive. Wow, okay. Uh, next question. I notice all of the bee boxes are outdoors. How do you accommodate for heavy rain? Heavy rain is never something we like to deal with, um, but it does happen in this Hawaii. And so our hive covers um, keep the hive nice and tight and dry. Um, they do wear off because they're made out of wood. And so we're constantly replacing equipment mm -hmm. all the time. Okay. But honeybees don't like to fly in the rain. So if it's raining, the bees just coop up into their hive and they wait for a sunny day or at least a day with no rain. All right. That makes sense. I would do the same thing. Right. All right. Next question. I noticed all of the, oh, wait, no. I loved baked goods. What's your favorite baked good to bake that features your honey? That's a good question. And, you know, most of the time, really, I, I don't like to bake with honey too much. Um, honey, as we had mentioned, when it's cooked or heated, you lose the beneficial properties of honey. Um, the, the enzymes, the amino acids, the vitamins, they all kind of break down. But the best thing to do is to drizzle your dessert or your baked good after it comes out of the oven. Like mm -hmm. say like a good pound cake and then you drizzle some honey over it. Now that, that's the way I like to all use right. honey and baked goods. All right, we have a few more questions. We have a lot more, but we're only going to get to three right, more. I'm fine. so sorry, could be no, a huge okay. fan base. I love questions. This is great. <laughs> all right, so um, we'd love to ask if there are any varietals of honey that you'd like to produce that you haven't yet? Whew, yeah. There are, a, 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 there's been some rumors that um, I mean, we have a lot of ranch land here in Hawaii and the ranchers have planted clover in the fields. And I know it's there and I've seen it, 
bloom. But it's, it's rare to actually have the timing just right. And so maybe one day that could be something quite, quite nice is to capture a Hawaiian clover blossom honey. Um, I know a lot of people like clover honey on the mainland. Um, so that could be a good possibility. And also the coconut tree. We, we have a varietal that sometimes happens, sometimes does not. But the kiave and the coconut do tend to bloom together sometimes. But I've never truly harvested a 100% pure coconut blossom honey. And I think that would be really unique, you that know, the be. coconut tree. So, yeah, coconut Can I get on the wait honey. list now for that sure. one? Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, next question. Do you have classes in beekeeping? Uh, I, I don't, actually. I don't. I would love to teach. Uh, I just have so many things going on right now with managing the business. Um, it's maybe when I semi-retire and, mm -hmm. you know, I could kind of oversee the operation and then teach <laughs> the new generation on beekeeping. Okay, well, our really last question, although there's tons more on my screen. Keep them we got to keep it. <laughs> yeah. Do you like to eat honeycomb? It's so tasty, but I heard it's bad for bees. Oh, well, it depends. It's, it's, it's not that it's bad for bees. There's just a right time to harvest the honeycomb. Mm -hmm. uh, comb, beeswax, the wax is so costly to the honeybee that you don't want to take it when they really need it. But during the summer and the peak of our fall crops, we actually do produce some honeycomb. And um, it's a seasonal product. We don't offer it all the time. Sometimes we can't even wholesale it. We're just offering it from our website. And it is really good for you. Um, the, the beeswax is a lipid, so you can actually chew it. It's, it's, it's an all natural chewing gum. And the more you chew it, the more honey comes out of it. And then you're left with this kind of like gum, essentially. But it's, it's tasty, it's really good. And sometimes that's all I'm eating all day because I'm working in the yard and, and you just don't want to stop, you know? So you just, you just fuel yourself with honeycomb. It's, it works, I, I'm, I think that's I similar you. to Dylan from Manoa Chocolate. He's just eating nibs all day too. Oh, so they're, they're, that's another guys. one. Then you're, you get home and you're just kind of wired, but, but at least it's a good kind of wired, you know? All right, so we're doing a couple more questions. Uh, next question, is it better to store in the refrigerator or the freezer? Good raw honey is best on the counter where you can easily access it any time of the day. Mm -hmm. You want to keep it out of the sun. Um, it doesn't need to be refrigerated, especially if you like your honey to stay in a liquid state. Um, so counter or pantry, mm -hmm. yep, out of sun. That's the best place for honey. Okay, great. Um, all right, so we have a next question. Is it better, um, uh, do you, let's see here. Is there anything I can do to make my tiny apartment patio a better place for my bee neighbors? Yes. Grow plants, plants that flower, um, like a basil plant, for example. The honeybees love the pollen of basil plants. And who doesn't like basil when you're cooking Italian food? I mean, it's, it's a great addition. Rosemary, thyme, all of those. They're really good. Lavender, those are easy. You know, you don't have to give too much attention to them mm -hmm. and you can get something out of it and watch the bees come in the morning. All right. So I know we had a couple of food pairings here today. So we've got the cheese, which is a white cheddar. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the sourdough bread. We have the nut butter, strawberries. Are there any other key food pairings you would suggest if anyone was going to dive into a honey food pairing night? Oh, a night. I was thinking there's a cakey in the morning with their or, cereal. Or for whatever. Granola. Yeah, cakey in the morning, um, granola. That's great. Yeah. Uh, for the evening, I love it with ice cream sometimes, you know, instead of doing a chocolate sauce, honey sauce. Mm. Um, gosh, this just, I mean, kind of goes with everything. Is it like Forrest Gump with like the shrimp? What goes with the shrimp? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. like Bubba gums or whatever. Really, my favorite way though to consume honey is just by the spoonful. You know, you really get to capture that that really uniqueness of yeah. the varietal. So that's how I do it. I, right well, it before bed, sense. you know. It makes sense. I mean, each one's so unique and just mm -hmm. so delicious. So that makes perfect sense. And thank you, Kavika. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and thanks for coming to the Big Island. Of course. All right. So before we close today. We'd like, uh, for our Meet the Makers event, we're gonna announce the lucky winner for our giveaway. I know you guys are all waiting for that. So our winner of a full-size by Melly Honey Trio is Farah M. Congratulations, we'll contact you to redeem your prize. Woo, I love it. 
I love these giveaways at the end. Um, mahalo everyone for tuning in today. It was such a treat transporting you all here to Pauilo Mauka. And thank you, Kavika, for teaching us all about bees and beekeeping and just the incredibleness of how you produce these just these gorgeous products. Thank you, bees. Thank you, bees. That's true. You help harvest. Yes, it's all about the bees. I feel like I can speak for most of us when I say I won't be able to taste honey ever again the same way. And I have a more sophisticated palate for honey. Thank you. I thought my, my palate was pretty sophisticated before, but like now it's even more enhanced. I'm like, awesome. the sweetness is like this and the flowers. Um, so, you know, I, I really do have a much bigger appreciation for bees and for how they impact our environment and how we need to protect them. So thank you. That's what it's all about. And if you didn't get a chance to snag Kavika's Honey Trio before today's event, it's not too late. To get yours, visit houseofmanaup.com and click the Meet the Makers tab in the right corner or scan the QR code below. We have a limited quantity of these exclusive sets, so purchase yours now. In just about a month, we're traveling to Kunia on Oahu, where we'll meet the guys behind Kohana Rum Distillery, Hawaii's only farm-to-bottle rum company for an experience you will not want to miss. We'll take a tour of their Hawaiian sugarcane farm and, of course, learn how to shake up some cocktails using their rum. I can't wait for this one. It's going to be good. I mean, this one was, of uh, course, better. Um, We're going to have honey as we taste the rum, too. Of course. Of course. To RSVP for this event, head to our Meet the Makers page or scan the QR code below. Also, for card holders, be sure to keep an eye out for your monthly Hawaiian mile statements for more exclusive perks. All right. Aloha from Paolo, and see you guys next time. Aloha. Aloha.